Okay, we restarted and now you can really start to see what we need to work on the next couple of tutorials. So you already see, well, visually it looks totally bad. <laughs> Let's say it this way. And there are also some errors here. That is because we turned off the whole scene point light shadows and also this rectangular lights, they are not at all supported on the quest. So we um, could leave them in there and change them to static and bake all the lighting. But actually those yeah, let's let we we could try it, but from the experience I did last time, this is uh, like really really bad. It um, it blows up our our light baking time, and also the settings are not at all for static lighting. They are for ray traced um, environment. So I would recommend not using them. Let's delete them. Yes, to all. Also, this one here, we can we can um, keep it, but let's move it a little bit in there, so it gets a better better shadow casting. And also, we make to turn this to static, so we can bake it. Let's crank it up. And if I think about it now, let's let's also delete it. We use a spotlight. It's much more efficient. And in the end, this this um, this object here basically is uh, perfect for a spotlight. So let's. Oh, no, sorry, no direction light I want to use the spotlight in there. Let's put it in there. And crank this up. Something like this. And give this a nice temperature. Something warm. The next step is our direction light. We need to keep this. Let's find an interesting angle. I don't want to um, spot the point light on the TV. This way you would get a very um, bright light map there. And I want to show our video on there. So let's change the angle a bit. Something like this. So now we have some interesting shadow going on here and there, also on this side here. That is good. And let's see what we can get rid of. So we don't want to have the post process volume in there. We don't want to have the fog. The reflection capture is okay. Let's see, do we have any other lights in there? No, we don't, but we would want to have a skylight. So let's get a skylight. And for now, as I don't have any interesting envi environment in there, I want to use uh, a cube map. So let's change it to specified cube map and select one that is clear sky or something like this. Let's set it to movable that we can see what is actually happening there. I don't like the bluish color. So so let's try TQ map 01. Okay, this is good. I want to have it a bit stronger, something like this. And I also want to increase the indirect lighting because I don't have a lot of lights in there. So I would need the light that comes from the outside to bounce around in there. Let's increase it to, to 
to three we may need to go in there later and change this again but i think this is a good starting point and also for our directional light it's basically the same let's go in there and also change some th settings so let's make this static the intensity is good for now want to have a bit warmer colors in there use the temperature that's fine indirect lighting let's also crank this up to something like six now and this should work very good also let's check the light mass settings okay there we really need to change some things i would start by changing the level scale to something smaller that way we get a uh, better uh, better shadow better shadows and um, the lighting bouncing um, i have experimented with this so i think i found that um, point two is a good point also the number of indirect lighting bounces uh, should be way up so let's take the only real number 42 for this we want to have more skylight bounces as i said we don't have a lot of lighting in there in this room so we would need to have uh, to get the lighting information from outside so let's crank it up to something like three we need to increase this quality later on so for the first round let's let's keep it on one but we will increase it later on i want to increase the smoothness because i i'm not able to do very high resolution light maps here so i'm not able to capture any detail in the light mapping and that's the reason i'm cranking this up so if i don't get any sharp details like something like this i don't want to have any pixelated uh, shadows so let's crank it up so i get smooth shadowing something like this here and the most important thing is the use ambient occlusion right now you can see we have turned off ambient occlusion and this really looks super flat it's basically similar to the unlit version so we want to go in there and use our ambient occlusion and i don't want to use the volumetric light map let's use the sparse one and this light here is it already on static no let's switch it to static stationary lighting is not supported on the uh, on the android device if we are not using vulcan what we are not doing so let's keep this off right now and for those two that's our only dynamic lighting we will have because we need to turn this on and off so we will integrate that functionality later but i think for now this doesn't look bad as a starting point and we have some very basic lighting in here one thing i would change is let let's go to the windows and add our portals our light mess portals this way we are telling the engine to really pay attention to this section and that there is light coming in from outside so let's let's center it here so it really captures all our window here and we do the same for the other window over there something like this and while we are in there let's also add our light mass importance volume and adjust it to the actual room
Okay, let's have a quick look at our light map density. And you can see this is not working at all. So we really need to increase the size of the walls and the floor. So of the building, we need to decrease on those surfaces here. But to get a very first impression on what this is looking, let's set the lighting quality to let's do a medium one because preview really looks a lot different. I think if you use medium, higher production, they are more similar, but this one here is really, really different. So I would use at least medium for this. And let's save everything up and do our very first lighting test. And right now this really won't look very good. And we also need to go in there and do a lot of optimizations, especially for the meshes and the textures. But I want to get a first lighting test in there. So let's build lighting only. Ah, and one thing you recognized it instantly finished. The reason for this is if we open up the world settings and we open up light mass and scroll all the way down, open this one here up, the advanced settings. And here you can see that there's force no pre-computed lighting in there. We this, this basically means don't use any light maps at all. But in our case, we want to use light maps. So let's turn this off. And try to build it again. And now you should see that the swarm agent is starting and the lighting is being built. OK, as expected, the lighting looks awful, <laughs> but at least uh, we have some basic uh, built lighting in there. So it's um, not that expensive. In theory, we could go in there on the quest right now and uh, watch it. But I have done that right now and we are at five to ten frames per second. So it's really not um, not fun to go in there and uh, try it out. So I would suggest you wait until we have made some modifications to the actual scene. But as you can see, um, we have some basic lighting. We have the issues we anticipated. So you can see we have this lighting bob blobs in there. And if we open up our light map density, you can see this are exactly those, those tiles there. So we need to increase that. Also, one thing, and this is a personal matter, um, the ambient occlusion is very, very low. And I like ambient occlusion, so I am going to turn this up quite a bit. But um, this depends on what you want to achieve with this project. In my case, let's crank this up. You can go in there and we have the use ambient occlusion. And down here we have the occlusion exponent. It's at one. Let's crank it up to three. So we get a stronger ambient occlusion effect. Here you could also change the distance. And another thing I recognized it when we open up our developer tools and our uh, our message log, you can see that we have a lot of overlapping UVs. For example, the picture with 41.7, um, nearly 42, damn it. Uh, that's really bad. So we may need to go in there. Something like 2% is not that bad. That's, that's fine. We can live with that. But 40, 47 is, uh, that's really too high. So we would go in there and change those later. But we will make a separate tutorial on what you need to do with the with the actual geometry, because there's a lot we can do to change how this is uh, how this is looking. Uh, if you look at this, this this is really bad and we really need to increase some settings there. Okay, but 
we have a good starting point in this tutorial we have modified our project settings to gain some performance with the oculus quest and we also removed the cinematic cameras the lighting features that were not working with the quest and also the expensive lights we uh, re um, replaced them with cheaper ones and we did a very very first um, light baking to see where our problem areas are and in the next tutorial we are actually going to start having a look at the static meshes because most of these things except this one here and this one and the fan on the top are skeletal meshes but the rest is really static meshes and there's a lot we can optimize in there for the quest you should have like a hundred and fifty thousand uh, triangles in in the view and if you have a look at this uh, blanket here and we open it up you can see that this alone this very small asset has like half over half a million triangles so this is not at all this is much 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 too high for the oculus quest to run smoothly so we really need to go in there and make some settings uh, changes also if we look at the uvs you can see they are also very bad so we need to um, yeah, to optimize it in the next tutorial. So see you there.